Hi everyone, this is a training for community health workers and health educators on kidney disease. My name is Finesse Copeland and I'm a registered nurse and I'm also a health disparities project director for Caring Community Partnership located in Moberly, Missouri. So on your screen is a pretest, and this is just to check your current knowledge on kidney disease. What you already know, you know, what are three functions of the kidney, um, where they are located, as well as some tools that can be used to screen or diagnose for kidney disease. Here are our learning objectives. And at the end of this presentation, we hope that you'll be able to state what the kidneys are, how they work, some of the functions of the kidneys, as well as how the kidney disease progresses. You'll also be able to state ways the kidney disease is treated, as well as to recognize that fear and grief are just some usual responses to kidney disease, as well as to outline tools um, for screening and diagnosis of kidney disease. And here are some facts on kidney disease. The problem of kidney disease is a worldwide phenomenon and reports have shown that approximately 35.5 million American adults have been diagnosed with chronic kidney disease and millions more are said to be at increased risk. While disease management is critical, it is important to stress the importance of prevention of disease progression. Kidney disease is associated with many health problems, such as hypertension, diabetes, and other cardiovascular events. However, an important point to note is that heart disease is the primary cause of death for all people with chronic kidney disease, and it is also reported to be the leading cause of death in the U.S. according to CDC. So, with this and many other initiatives, the National Kidney Foundation has been de dedicated to spreading awareness and prevention and treatment for kidney disease. When we think about the kidney, think about a strainer or a colander that keeps your noodles or your rice while fil it filters out unneeded water. With the kidneys, we keep what the body needs, such as electrolytes, hormones, and vitamins, and gets rid of waste, such as urea and creatinine, that can be harmful if it's built up in the body. When we think about the kidneys, the kidneys are two bean-shaped organs, and each can be found on each side of the spine, and it's about the size of a fist. Each kidney weighs roughly about five ounces, and it, their main job is really to regulate the fluids within your body and to get rid of what the things that the body doesn't need. And the, it filters approximately half cup of blood every minute. Now here is a pictorial representation of how the healthy kidney works. In red, we have the artery and it distributes oxygen rich blood throughout your body. This blood, it then flows to the kidney and can get filtered through the glomeruli, which consists of millions of tiny capillaries. It keeps what the body needs and sends what it does not need to the ureters. The ureter is the structure that carries urine to the bladder. Now, once the blood is quote unquote cleaned, the blood then proceeds to the veins, which then carries the filtered blood to the heart and the lungs to be reoxygenated. And then the cycle um, continues. Here's a list of functions for the kidney. Some of these functions were mentioned before in the previous slides. Um, the kidneys help to remove waste and excess fluid, and the waste includes our urea and our creatinine. And it keeps what the body needs, such as our vitamins and our electrolytes. The kidneys also works by controlling the production of red blood cells. And this is done through the production of a hormone that is called erythropoietin. And in the kidneys, this is needed to send a signal to the bone marrow for the production of red blood cells. Now, this is why sometimes when people have end-stage renal disease, they might have a low red blood cell count or anemia due to the kidney's inability to produce the needed hormone to make red blood cells. Another function of the kidney is to make vitamins that control growth. Vitamin D is the such vitamin that's needed. 
and vitamin D is essential in absorbing calcium and phosphor phosphorus. Now, calcium is very essential in, in the development of bone and maintenance of bone density. So when people have kidney disease or chronic kidney disease, you, especially in the elderly population, you might see them have what we call brittle bones or weaker bones. The kidneys also function by releasing hormones that help to regulate blood pressure. One such hormone is called renin. And in occasions where the blood pressure falls, renin is then secreted by the kidneys and which causes a constriction of the blood vessels and thereby increasing the blood pressure. You can just think about a garden hose. When you turn on that water and the pressure is high, when you put your finger over the top, it causes an increase in pressure. It's a similar situation with our red blood cells. When renin is increased, it causes a constriction of that blood vessel, which then causes the increase in the blood pressure. Here is a pictorial representation of how kidney disease can progress. We use a tool called the estimated glomerular filtration rate, which we will talk more about in subsequent slides but it really gives an idea of how well your kidney is functioning. On this slide here, it talks about the GFR, which is a glomerular filtration rate, and the percentage of the kidney function, as well as this helps with the staging of the chronic kidney disease. Now, a GFR of 90 and above, it indicates a good or a normal kidney function. At, this, at stage two, it shows mild changes in kidney function with a GFR of approximately 60 to 89%. Now, by themselves, these GFR numbers don't necessarily mean that a person has CKD, but it can indicate that there is some damage present to the kidneys. Now, this can often be seen in individuals that have hypertension and diabetes. So it is very important for community health workers to stress the importance of medication adherence and chronic disease management to maintain kidney function and also to slow the disease progress. At stage three, we see a transition from mild to severe decrease in the GFR rate. Now, this is a sign of chronic kidney disease. And in the more advanced level of this stage, which is represented by a GFR of 30 to 44 percent, symptoms can start to appear, but this can vary from individual to individual. Some symptoms may include swelling of the extremities, shortness of breath, even changes to the urine, such as having a foamy, dark brown or even tea colored urine. Um, at this stage, symptoms may not always be present, but the risk of worsening kidney disease is very high. At stage four, we can see that there is a severe loss of kidney function, and this is represented by a GFR of 15 to 29 percent. Now, once there is a GFR of less than 15 percent, we're actually looking at end stage renal disease, which is irreversible. Now, as we mentioned before, there's no cure for, for chronic kidney disease. And in many cases, the progress of the disease can be slow and take many years to progress. However, in order for your doctor to confirm your diagnosis, a series of tests will be done over a period of time. And this period of time is over a three month period where you can have one or more markers. And this can be either abnormal estimated glomerular filtration rate or a urine albumin creatinine ratio rate, which is abnormal. And we'll be talking more about the normal ranges in subsequent slides. Other factors that the physician will consider includes your age, your race, gender, among other factors. Here are some screening tools for kidney disease, blood tests, the urine tests, kidney biopsy, as well as risk assessment tools. We'll be elaborating on each of them in subsequent slides. The estimated glomerular filtration rate. Now, this is a blood test that checks how well the kidneys are functioning. We did touch on this before in the previous slide, but just to reiterate what was said, 
the kidney function or the glomerular filtration rate here is represented by the percentage of how well your kidneys are functioning. And this helps to stage the progress of the disease. Here we can see that 90% or higher, it's, it shows that it's a stage one. And the description of this is just to show that there's normal or high, high functioning of the kidneys. Stage two, you have a 60 to 80 nine percent changes in kidney function which shows mild decrease um, in kidney functioning stage three which is considered the chronic kidney disease stage is really 30 to 59 percent changes in kidney function and shows mild to moderately decrease in kidney function stage four is a 15 to 29 percent change which shows that there is severely decreased functioning of our kidneys. And at stage five, we have less than 15% functioning of our kidneys. And this indicates a kidney failure. Here we have a representation of the urine albumin to creatinine ratio. Here is a chart, and I know that this chart could be very helpful for, to, for community health workers to use when providing health education. Now, a urine test that checks the urine albumin to creatinine ratio um, is it's a very essential urine test for assessing kidney function. Now, first, the amount of albumin in the urine is measured. Higher amounts of albumin in the urine can be a sign of kidney problems or just an indicator that the kidneys are not working as well as they should. Because usually the kidneys does not spill or waste protein because the, the body usually uses this. So in an instance where you're seeing increased amount of albumin or protein in the urine, it, it really indicates that the kidneys are not functioning well. So a urine albumin creatinine ratio that's below 30 milligram per gram, it's considered normal. But when it goes between 30 to 300 milligram per gram, it means that you have a moderately increased albumin in, within the urine. And then anything above 300 means that you have a severe increase in albumin within the urine. Based on your estimated GFR and your urine albumin creatinine ratio, your healthcare team may also want to do additional tests. Additional tests may include imaging such as ultrasound or CT scan, and this is to get a picture of your kidneys and your urinary tract. And it can actually tell the healthcare provider if your kidneys are too large, too small, if there's any kidney stones or tumors present. But when it comes to the kidney biopsy, this is done in some cases just to check for a specific, if there's a specific type of kidney disease. This test shows the type and the amount of kidney damage that is present, and it also helps in planning of future interventions for the patient. Another good intervention that providers may do is to include a nephrologist, a part of your, your team, as they specialize in the treatment of kidney diseases. Another tool that we can use is a kidney risk quiz. Now, this is an interactive quiz that is used to identify risk factors and to determine the risk of developing chronic kidney disease. Depending on the risk factors identified, suggested next steps and educational information are given to the participants. Now, treatment decisions may be based on your symptoms and other health problems that you may have. But an important thing to note for chronic kidney disease is that there is no cure. So when it comes to lifestyle management, it is very important. Regular exercises, maintaining unhealthy weight, smoking cessation, eating a healthy and a balanced diet, managing your diabetes, managing your hypertension and other cardiovascular diseases is a very important um, thing to consider because all of these factors can determine the health of your blood vessels, which can influence the health of your kidneys. Another thing to consider is kidney protective medications, and this can include your ACE inhibitors, and this can help with the management of hypertension. And hypertension is really a major risk factor for kidney disease. So the management of these chronic illnesses cannot be overly emphasized by our community health workers.
Also, having regular visits to, to clinicians as recommended, this can really help to identify early risk factors, early signs and symptoms that can be treated before disease progresses. When it comes to dialysis, the two main types of dialysis is the hemodialysis and the peritoneal dialysis. With the hemodialysis, this is the cleaning of the blood outside of the body um, with the use of a machine. While with peritoneal dialysis, your blood is cleaned inside your body. So it is cleaned through the lining of the abdomen or, or called the peritoneum. Another important tool that I would like to mention is the DART or the Decision Aid for Renal Therapy. Now, this is an interactive online program that was designed really for older adults that can help them in making decisions over kidney failure treatment. Having a chronic illness, it can be an overwhelming situation, and there are many treatment options for kidney disease. So having this tool can be very helpful, especially for elderly patients, to help them have that sense of autonomy in their care, which can help them to make important decisions towards their health. Another treatment option is kidney replacement surgery, which is really ideal, but not everyone really have access um, to this type of service. So, I mean, other lifestyle management practices has to be emphasized, even if kidneys are, are, are replaced through surgery. Coping with a diagnosis. Living with any chronic disease such as kidney disease can be physically and emotionally challenging. And it is very common to feel sad, scared, frustrated, or even angry about the illness. For your emotions and feelings can also change throughout the course of the disease. So even if a person is not newly diagnosed, they can still have signs of depression, signs of anxiety due to um, the diagnosis or the illness. So an important thing is to have a good support system. Community health workers can help individuals to identify the support system and, in, and persons diagnosed can lean on this support system, you know, just to help them to cope throughout, throughout their disease um, process. Also to consider peer support, and this can be accessed through, you know, social workers, it can be accessed through the National Kidney Foundation, or even through the healthcare provider. So community health workers can be that resource person to help direct individuals to these needed services. Important factors also to try to manage stress as best as an individual can, because too much stress can contribute to poor health outcomes. This can increase the blood pressure, which can cause further damage to the kidneys. So good stress management techniques are very important. Some examples of these could be deep breathing techniques, just asking for help, having a prior routine, taking a vacation, or even setting realistic goals. Understanding the signs and symptoms of depression and seeking medical help is very important because we have to be able to identify the signs early in order to prevent things from getting worse. So signs of depression may, be, may include excess sleep, tiredness, not willing to participate in group activities, or being sad and crying more than usual. Another thing is that we should always remind individuals that they are not alone through their, through their disease journey. I mean, one in three individuals experience depression within a chronic disease. So it is good to talk to a healthcare provider, talk to a social worker, talk to a counselor, or even just lean in on your support system to help to find the needed services it can be help in coping with the diagnosis. This slide shows the post test. And I really hope that this presentation was helpful and will help you to answer these questions correctly. This training is supported by an educational grant from the AstraZeneca, Bayer, and the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services. Thank you, and I hope that you'll be able to take the follow-up survey just to help us to continue to shape the community health worker training tools and resources that is associated with chronic kidney disease, please scan the QR code provided.